this next step of this exercise, you're going to be using ink with a brush to apply line to your object. There's also ways that you can apply texture as well. So you have some different options for how you brush the ink on. The first option, which is the simplest, which you probably would have guessed, is using a brush itself with the ink. So this is a double zero round brush. It's a great brush for applying ink with line because all you're going to do is dip the brush in the ink, okay? And just like the croco pens, if you get some ink around the ferrule of the brush, you can just wipe it off with a paper towel if you want to avoid, you know, the possibility of drips. Um, and then you can just use the tip of it to make very little thin textures and thin lines, or obviously you can press the brush down to make thicker textures or thicker lines rather. Um, and so you're able to control the weight of the line, which is a big part of this project, by using a thin line and just the tip of the brush, and then you can obviously make it thicker by pushing the brush down further. So what I would suggest is if you're using this option is to, with all of the things that we've done so far, is make sure that you have some crap, scrap paper nearby that you can just practice and lay things out on. Okay. So that is the double zero round brush. Now, another option we have is like a reservoir brush, meaning that the ink is held inside of the brush. And so this is an example of that. The way that these work is um, there's a cap on them, which comes off and then the brush is revealed. I'm going to put that cap back on for right now because I'm gonna show you how to refill these. So to refill them, you unscrew this part here. You can actually see kind of the threads of the screwing in here. And then you're just gonna put this part to the side. This is gonna go straight down into a bottle of ink. And then there's a little part on the side here that says press. You would just squeeze that. And what's happening is it's sucking the ink inside of the reservoir part of the brush. Once it's full, then you just simply screw this back on. You just have to be careful. Sometimes it gets a little messy. This is, it's a good thing to do over the sink um, or just make sure that you have some paper towels nearby that you can wipe this part off if it gets really inky. Now, afterwards, you would just pull this off. Sometimes when you refill them, they don't work right away um, and you have to kind of like brush them around for a while or you have to push this area to get the ink to come out. Um, so just keep that in mind, but they are, they're a really nice, like, really nice, easily controlled brush. Okay, so, and they just need to be refilled every once in a while, whereas the double zero brush, you'll keep dipping it in the ink. Um, but sometimes that's, there's kind of advantages to both, I think. So that's the reservoir brush. Something else that I should let you know at this point, um, not that you'll be doing it with this exercise, but we do have colored inks as well. We have two sets of really nice, like variety of colors of permanent ink that you could try out. So though the ink in the bottles, you could use the double zero brush with, these have all been filled with black ink at some point. So I would not want you to really fill these with the colored ink just because you're gonna contaminate our colored ink if you fill them with this. So if you're thinking about that, you definitely wanna use the double zero round brush. Now, another option that I have is their Micron has, a, or Pigma has a brush marker. So these are similar to what I just showed you, the reservoir brush that you manually refill, only these are already refilled. So the issue with these is, is once they run out, they're out, so we can't refill them. Um, and so they have the same feel pretty much. I don't think they make as thick of a line as the other two options, and certainly not, um, if you want thicker lines, certainly not as thick as this reservoir brush. So this is something that you could try out as well. Um, but you can go thin and thick lines with these. So these are some options that you have. Um, probably the most accessible one is going to be the double zero brush with a bottle of ink. Um, there's a limited number of these other two options. You can mix and match, you can use just one, really what you're most comfortable with and what's available. My goal in this demonstration is for you to see how a round brush can be used to create different weights of line. I also want you to notice that sometimes I'll break a line in, in a place just to kind of create like an implied edge as opposed to just drawing and outlining everything. I'm gonna change up the 
brushes that I use depending on the line weight and I'll also change the pressure that I use with the brushes to create different line weights. So you can see right now the lines that I've placed in, there are some places where those lines are thicker and some places where they are thinner. The thicker areas tend to be used in spots that are darker or spots that are just more integral to the structure of the form. Whereas I'll use the thinner edges for lighter areas like where I'm outlining maybe like a highlight or in areas that are maybe just like smaller minute details that aren't as, don't have as harsh of a contrast as where I'm putting the thicker lines. And so I'll just work my way around using the spring of the round brush to enhance the contours that are in the form. So I'm really just outlining edges edges of the form, edges of shadows, edges of highlights. Outlining it, breaking the line in places, making the line thick and thinner in other places. Whatever I can do to enhance the form at this point. Now I've gotten to a point where I'm adding more detail and I tend to like the double zero brush for the smaller, finer, minute details. I'll also take the double zero brush and build on lines. So if there's a line that I don't feel is thick enough in a spot, I will add on to that line using the double zero brush. As I switch brushes, I'll test them out on scrap paper first, and I'll use different brushes for different things. This brush is the most versatile, I think. It's the easiest one to go thick to thin. Um, it also flows really smoothly, but if I really want to have thin lines, I'll use that double zero brush. Um, and probably the one that I use the least is the Pigma brush marker, but sometimes I'll use that as well. If you have one that's more comfortable to you, I would encourage you to use that one um, most of the time. And then try the other ones and see if there's a particular spot that you feel they're better fit for. As I start to finish up, I just look for edges that need to be brought out more or places that I missed. So if there's an edge that doesn't feel defined enough, I'll define it. Um, if there's a small detail that's missing that needs to be added, I'll go ahead and, and add it. And I'll just try to look at the whole thing at once. Then to clean up, make sure the cap markers are capped, the small brush is washed out and rinsed really well. Make sure you wa wipe off the ferrule so it's nice and clean. And that's it.